For this demo, we're going to be using the Northwind Traders sample database. This can be found online. I'll put the link below in the description. Northwind Traders is just a storefront, and we've got a ton of tables here relating to the store. But today, we're going to be focusing on the products table. So let's go ahead and go to the Power Apps portal. On the left hand side here in the portal, under data, you're going to see data flows. If you don't see this option, that means your environment hasn't been set up to use Dataverse, and you're actually going to have to go into your Power Platform Admin Center and set that up and come back to this step. Data flows allow Dataverse to pull in data from disparate data sources, and this allows us to have the freshest data from all different types of data sources that we connect to via data flows. So what we're going to have to do now is create a data flow to our access database so we can pull that data up into Dataverse and build a Power App on top of that data. So let's go ahead and let's click, click on data flows and we're going to create a data flow. Start from blank and I'm going to give it a quick name here. And once I get a list of sources I can choose from, I'm going to choose access database. And we have a bunch of connection settings here that we're met with. I actually have my access database sitting on my desktop. So what I've done is set up a on-prem data gateway so I can connect this environment to my desktop. And now if you have OneDrive set up, you can also just drop that access database there and go from there. Once we set up that connection, our next step is to choose which tables we're going to pull from that access database into Dataverse. And if you remember, we're only going to be using the products table. So I'm going to scroll down and select the products table. Once I select that, we're going to see a quick preview on the right hand side. I'm just going to make sure it's the right table and I'm going to hit transform data. In the transform data section, we're going to have the opportunity to verify that this is the exact data that we want. And since we're only pulling one table, we don't need to do anything. But this is more when you're pulling multiple tables and we want that query to be exact. So we get exactly the data that we want. So it's going to populate with our data and we should be good to go. So I'm going to hit next. Our next step here is to set up the column mapping. So we're going to actually see what table we're going to load our access database to. And as you can see, I selected load to new table because I don't already have a products table in my Dataverse environment. And on the right hand side, we have column mapping. Now, all this looks pretty sound to me, so I'm just going to move forward. Here, we'd also have the opportunity to change column types, etc., as necessary. So we can move forward as it looks good. Once we hit next, we have the option to set up our data flow to pull data on a schedule. Now, we don't need to do that because our access database isn't constantly being updated. This would only be useful if you had an access database that was, you know, part of a legacy application that, you know, while you were transitioning into the power platform, the access database was still being used. So Dataverse would keep pulling the freshest data and updating our new app that we create. So we don't need that. We're going to go ahead and select manual and then our data flow is created. It's going to take some time to set it up. So after that, we can actually start creating our power app. Let's go back to the power apps portal here on the left hand side. We're going to go to create. And we're going to actually choose common data service. This is actually what Dataverse used to be called. They've yet to change the names in all of our uh, all of our applications. So I'm going to go ahead and create a connection to our common data service, which would be our, da our Dataverse database. So we're going to create that connection and pull the table that we need. So I'm going to scroll down and select the products table. And I know I have a couple here, but I know it's the second one because I tested it. And I'm going to hit connect. This is going to set up an application for us backed by this product table. And it's going to have a lot of the stuff already baked right in. You're going to see that in just a second. And bam, it looks like we've got 
a whole application. And once I select a product, you're going to see it goes into some details about the product, but this is not the information I want populated. So I'm actually going to click this and change what I want displayed in the menu items. So I'm going to put that as the name. And I'm going to set up this little subtext as the price of the product. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to choose list price. And once that's set up, I'm just going to put a dollar sign in front of that. And I think it looks pretty good right now. I'm just going to scroll down. And this is all the data from our products table. So I'm actually going to go into our next screen here, which would be once we click a menu item and it doesn't really have much information, but this is the screen that should have all the details about our product. So I'm going to go to the right side properties and I'm going to edit the fields that show up. Now this step is super easy. We're just going to click remove and remove the created on. And I want to choose some more fields that I want to add up. So I want discontinued there. I want our list price. I want the product name. And I'm just going to move things around a little so they look good. Everything looks good now. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the previous screen and I'm going to change the title here just so it looks a little more tailored. I'm going to go and save. Just going to save that as Northwind products. Now I'm actually going to go back to my edit screen because there is something I forgot to do. When I select a product and I try to edit it, that screen actually doesn't have those updated fields. So I'm going to go into that screen and update those fields as I updated them in the view mode. So I'm going to select what I needed, which would have been discontinued list price and product name. And once that's set up, I'm just going to reorder them just like I did previously in my other screen. And I'm going to hit save. Once I hit save, I'm going to go ahead and publish it. And I'm going to go run it. And I'm going to scroll through all of my products and it looks good. I'm going to update a list price for the biscuits mix. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to update the Northwind Traders Chai to $19.99. All right. And it looks like it updated as you see the price on the chai. And we are good. So that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video and I hope you got some value out of it. If you liked the video, go hit the like button. And if you want more content like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments section below. If you have any topic suggestions for future videos, I'd love to hear about them. Thank you, everybody.